diesel engine has more than enough muscle to power an 80,000 pound fully loaded big rig. But it's got nothing on the Bronco that powers this vessel. It's thousands of times larger than a car engine, more powerful than 200 semis, and able to harness the power of nearly 100,000 horses. It's K98MC, and it is one mammoth marine diesel engine. NAN BMW K98MC marine diesel engine. Cylinders up to 14. Maximum dry weight, 2,446 tons. Maximum power, 108,688 horsepower. Maximum fuel consumption, 328 tons per day. The massive K98MC is among the biggest diesel engines in the world. Each customizable engine takes six months to build, assemble, and test. Because of its tremendous weight, it has to be disassembled into six or seven pieces and transported to the ship to be built up again. The K98MC engine is the brute force behind the Lionsgate Bridge container ship. Lionsgate is a, a post-Panamax vessel. In other words, she cannot go through the Panama Canal. She's too big for that. She is 940 feet long and 131 feet wide, which is pretty big, I would say. She can carry about 5,620 foot containers, which corresponds to about 60,000 tons of cargo. And if you look at the weight of the ship with its fuel and its cargo, you're carrying something around about 95,000 tons. The engine on board the Lionsgate Bridge is an 11 cylinder model of the K98 MC. At nearly 2,000 tons, it's about 10% of the ship's weight. The engine spans 65 feet, and you can only see the very top of the 40-foot workhorse from the highest floor of the engine room. The enormous pistons are 3 feet in diameter and can move 30 feet per second. It does that 94 revolutions per minute, 94 times per minute and it's going up and down. It's very slow really, but for this big engine it's quite a big speed because the, it's moving up 10 feet and 10 feet down every time. The weight of this is almost 6 tons going up and down. Like with all diesel engines, the piston compresses the air inside the cylinder, causing it to become extremely hot. Fuel is injected, it ignites, and the explosion forces the piston back down. The exhaust valves open, and the air intake ports uncover, allowing fresh pressurized air to enter the cylinder. This air is then compressed, and the cycle repeats. The movement of the piston originates with a crankshaft found inside the roomy engine. When there's a problem, engineers are sometimes required to step inside. We're not inside the big engine. What I'm actually touching here is the crankshaft, the big crankshaft. It weighs about 100 ton. They make them only in a few places in this world. 100 ton moving around here. This is the connecting rod. It's about five or six tons. When the engine is running, I couldn't be in here. This would be all filled with oil and the, all the mass is moving around. So this is no place for people to be when the engine is running. But there's no stopping this engine. When problems arise, one cylinder can be taken out of service to be repaired while the others continue working. You could put uh, about 150 truck engines in this ship and get the same power, but they would not last the first year. This engine runs about 6,000 hours per year, so it's actually running most of the time, and this kind of reliability you don't find in a truck engine. The speed and power of the vessel are controlled by the varying amounts of fuel injected into the cylinder. We pump in about 200 tons of fuel per day, 200 tons of uh, heavy fuel oil. It sounds like an awful lot, but if you think about it, a big truck would pump in the double to make the same amount of horsepower. So this is a very, very fuel efficient engine. Not only is it very fuel efficient, it burns some of the heaviest fuel oil you can think of in the world. And to pack more punch, the engine contains three turbochargers. These turbos boost the engine's horsepower. That power is harnessed to turn the massive propeller, which moves the titanic-sized ship across the ocean effortlessly. Plus, we can start it from the bridge, which is what we normally do. We can start it from control room, and there is a local mechanical system also where we bypass all the computers in case all the computers crash. We can just start it mechanically and it'll go. Once the engines are turned on, the ship is raring to go. 
you know, it's like having horses underneath you. You just kick them up and they start moving ahead. So this is the power of this engine here. With 11 massive cylinders and a potential to add up to three more, this engine can haul. Other ships are normally 23, 24 knots. And this one, if I open up the full power, it is 30 nautical miles. So we are much faster than them. It's like uh, sitting in a Ferrari on a racetrack and we can overtake any ship in the world, any ship. The K98MC and all diesel engines owe their efficient design to the ingenuity of one man, Rudolf Diesel. He was an engineer and he actually calculated this type of engine. At that time, it was the end of the 18th century, it was all steam engines. But he wanted to make a more efficient engine, so he came up with the diesel engine principle. His first engine was uh, 1893. And today, with larger ships entering the sea, Mammoth Marine diesel engines like the K98MC will be proliferating. The ships are going to be longer, they're going to be wider, but the marvel of it is that these same engines